Hey guys, welcome to the fourth episode of the Think Ten Languages podcast. I'm here today with Brett from NST, Never Stop Traveling. So thanks for joining, Brett. Um, and I'm just going to let you introduce yourself and your channel really quick. Hey guys, uh, I'm Brett and my channel is NST. It's a travel vlogging channel and a lot of travel hacks. Um, I'm, I'm living here in Israel and then after I leave here in about two months, I'm going to be doing six to nine months of traveling and making a ton of videos for that. So if you guys want to watch them, I don't know, just subscribe and check it out. Yeah. So he's tr done a lot of traveling. Um, and Brett is actually a personal friend of mine, so we've done a lot of traveling together. Um, he's been all around the world. Uh, he's traveled more than I have, if you can believe that. No, no, dude, I think I've more than I have. Well, you've traveled probably more extensively. I don't know. Yeah, a little over, over, Especially over the last year or two. Um, and so he does, yeah. does travel vlogs about traveling around the world, does a lot of traveling in Asia and stuff, and... So I'm really excited to have him on the podcast today. So, uh, why don't you tell people a little bit about where you are right now? So right now, I'm in South Israel in a little town called Beersheba. It's in the Negev Desert. Um, I don't know, it's in, we're technically in the continent of Asia, but it is the Middle East. If you're looking geographically, it's recognized from there, right on the corner of Africa. I know where Jerusalem is, and uh, I don't know. Cool. And how long have you been there? I've been here for about a year. I'll be here for a few more months. Cool. Cool. And you're just working, saving up some money while you're there? Yeah. Working, saving up money. I'm um, trying to do a lot, of, a lot of videos and stuff here. Um, I do a lot of writing, writing a new book, book or two. That's um, cool. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Cool. All right, so uh, let's get talking about just um, what people can do about traveling, about traveling for cheap, about why you should travel, uh, some of that stuff. Yeah, why you should travel. That is definitely like, I mean, like, why travel if you don't know why you want to travel? Right. Well, like I said, Brett's channel name is Never Stop Traveling, so clearly he's very passionate about this subject. Um, oh, yeah. Maybe we should start off by talking about some of the travels that we've done together. Yeah, so, so me and Aaron, we've actually traveled together in the States a decent amount, in Canada. Mm -hmm. We went to, uh, was it last year? We went to, yeah, last 2017, year. 2017, we, went to, uh, we. Ireland and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So we've known each other for what, about four years? Yeah, four or five years. Four or five years, yeah, 2013. Yeah. Maybe 2013, 2014. Um, and so last year, we did a good amount of traveling. Was it 2016? 2016, we went to Canada together. Last year, we went to Ireland, to France for Bastille Day, and then we went to Pamplona, Spain, during the running of the Bulls. Um, that was great. Yeah, and we, both, that we both did travel vlogs while we were do, uh, doing the running of the Bulls, so that was pretty cool. Um, most of you know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, I have a few other channels that I don't put as much work into, like my, I have a Fingtem Languages, Fingtem Esperanto, Fingtem Adventures, and so uh, we posted some vlogs about running of the bulls while we were over there, um, as well as hitchhiking and all kinds of other things. Um, so super fun. So, um, Brett, why don't you just talk a little bit about why you travel, why you think people should travel, and why you you never stop. I love to travel. Yeah. So I love to travel. Obviously, um, I think everyone should travel because it kind of pushes you outside your comfort zone. Um, it helps you to uh, grow as a person, figure out who you are. Um, you just learn so much about, you know, especially leaving a first world country, going to a third world country. Uh, it's kind of humbling learning how, how great and how spoiled we have it in the Western world. It's true. And, uh, I don't know, just a lot of, a lot of good conversations, a lot of good networking. Yeah. I mean, why not travel if you can? Mm. I like what you said about uh, getting out of your comfort zone. Because I don't know what percentage of people, at least from the United States, have ever traveled to, you know, poorer countries or poorer areas. Um, 
even in Mexico. Most people haven't even like left the U.S. It's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, it opens your mind. You know, uh, you get so comfortable living in the area where you live and not leaving and just uh, seeing life from one certain point of view. You know, so traveling to other places and different cultures where they do things that we do not find acceptable sometimes. You don't even have to go that far. I went, you know, um, last time I went to Montreal, um, I was walking in the supermarket, you know, and looking at the pork, the beef, the chicken, the horse meat. And then I look at that and I'm like, horse meat? They have horse meat here? So of yeah, course. Had horse sushi a bunch and horse sushi. Yes, yeah, horse sushi. Raw, sushi. raw horse. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. But you know, walking through the supermarket in Canada, to see the horse meat, and of course, I gotta try it, right? Like, how could you see that and not want to try it? I don't think people would try it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I do too. In fact, I was posting pictures on Facebook of the horse meat spaghetti that my couch surfing host made. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, because I told him, I was like, I've never heard of horse meat, of people eating horse meat before. And he goes, oh yeah, it's fine. We'll make some spaghetti. And so we made spaghetti that night, posted pictures on Facebook, and I got a bunch of people leaving nasty comments on my Facebook. You know, because it's something that we're not used to. It's not in our culture. Yes. We have so many associations to being horses as almost like humans, same as dogs and cats. Right. It's like, but where is that line? Yeah, for some reason we say dogs, chickens, horses, sheep, or dogs, chickens, cows, sheep, fish, turkeys are acceptable, and then horses are not. But you don't realize you don't realize that that's just an artifact of our culture. There's nothing that's actually true about the universe that makes it wrong to eat horses. We're getting into some strange topics really fast. <laughs> yeah, if you if you uh, have conversations with me and Aaron, sometimes we'll uh, we'll go off track and we'll just talk about literally anything, and you know, it's more of like philosophical stuff. We we enjoy kind of like um, challenging you know certain ideas and perspectives. I mean, why you know some people use uh, you know like in the states we use toilet paper like completely normal, but in Certain parts of our, you know, South America, um, if you use toilet paper, it's like, you know, it's a big no-no because it's so valuable. They use it to write notes and stuff in such a rare quality. Really? Yeah, I've never heard of that. Down. My buddy was, uh, we were in a tribe down in the Amazon and he huh. used toilet paper. And they told him, yeah, if you, usually if you use toilet paper, we kill you for that. Like, that's, that's a what? Uh, crazy high offense. But they're like, we know you're not from here. It's not yeah. culture. You're okay. Just don't do it again. That's and insane. Like, yeah. Yeah. I and there's over 100 uh, tribes in the Amazon that are uncontacted. And, uh, well, they're just not like, they don't have any contact with the, the outside world. Right. It's about 10, 10 in Papua New Guinea, one off the island, off an island, on an island, off of India. And then mm -hmm. there might be some in the Philippines, but... Those are the ones I know of so far. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the world is a bigger place with a lot more people and a lot more cultures than we realize. So why don't you tell people a little bit about your experiences last year? Uh, I think last year when you were, when you were going to China, Thailand, Vietnam, India. I don't know. I was kind of following you on some big, massive trip. It wasn't, it wasn't too long. It was only a few months, but um, I did well, travel for a few but, months. Well, but, okay, it wasn't too long, but for most people, traveling for a few months is a big deal. Maybe not for you. Yeah. I don't know. After you do a week, you're like, okay, I can do a month. After a month, you can do, like, three months, and then now right. I'm going to do six months, 12 months. Hopefully, I'll do a year this this next bout sure. if it goes well. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure a lot, plenty of people would love to do that. It's being able to take off work and leave family behind for that amount of time that most people... Work, work online. I'll be doing some work online to try to increase my income right. as I'm traveling. If I can still save a grand or two a month, I'll continue to travel as long as I can increase my savings and whatnot. Sure. Sure. Let me try that. Increase okay. the volume. So that trip, that was... Um, 
I traveled, I think I left the States in, on Halloween, the day after Halloween. And I went to India, traveled around India for a week or so, went up to Nepal, um, went through China, and then Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, and then, where else did I go? One or two, one or two places, but I don't know. It was really fun just kind of hanging out in Asia. Oh, Indonesia and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Indonesia is really cool. Bali is like super awesome. Yeah, it must, yeah. Have been a, must have been a great experience. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Learned a lot of lessons. Uh, mm-hmm. Met a lot of really cool people. And, and you went all by yourself. Yeah, yeah, I just left the bought a ticket to India and then, you know, kind of figured my way out. Got another ticket later on. Mm-hmm. So I did you have fun. a return ticket going back home before you started... Nope. No. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I, for, I just got all my tickets for this next trip, and I bought six tickets um, to six different places for under twelve hundred dollars, um, from Hawaii to the Philippines to Japan to Taiwan to Russia to Okinawa. Wow. Whatever. Yeah. So, um, do you base your travels off of one you can find cheap? Tickets, or do you decide where you want to go and then try to find the cheapest tickets when you're going there? Well, I'm trying to go to every country in the world in the next three or so years. <laughs> Wait, um, every country in the world? Yeah. So you're going to so go to North Korea like, as well? I that I can just continuously travel for the next three or four years. So are you going to go to North Korea? Yeah, I'm trying to get permission from the State Department right now. Uh, they denied my first application. You have to be a journalist or whatever, but... Um, really? Yeah. Like they, Dennis Rodman. You can go if you're a U.S. citizen. If yeah. you get permission from the State Department, you need a special visa. Um, or if you have two citizenships, you can get you can go on your other passport. Um, right. Okay, so... Uh. <laughs> So you're either going to have to become a journalist or become a citizen of another country to go there? Well, I have blogging and I do YouTubing, so I think uh, blogging counts online okay. journaling. Yeah, because I know, um, what's his name, Fun with Lewis or someone? There was a big YouTuber yeah, was, that... He did a video in North Korea. Fun with Lewis? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that a few years ago. Um, and still have plans of going to Antarctica? Yeah, I actually just applied for a job down there with PAE. Um, they're a really good company. Uh, uh, right. I'm going to go either way, but I'd rather not go through a tour. I'd rather go for maybe like six months and work okay. a little bit. Because I remember we had been talking a few years ago about wanting to... We are, I mean, you don't have to come, but like I am going to Antarctica through Argentina if I don't get a job. Right. Yeah, so just for those of who don't know us brett and i had been talking a few years ago about um i've been to almost every continent now i just need to go to australia and antarctica have you ever been to australia not yet no so you're the same as me then um and you know i'm gonna i'm sure someday i'll take a vacation to australia uh before i die um it's harder to get to antarctica but you can do it several ways one is getting a job there which you need to uh that you need kind of a long commitment right because they're not going to pay for you to go there and 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 pay you to work for long periods of time um or they're not going to pay you to do that for short periods of time the other way that is easier for most people to do it is taking luxury cruises down there so you fly to the southern tip of argentina you get on a cruise that takes like a week and sails to Antarctica. And then you can do different things. You can go on excursions through the ice rifts, uh, kayaking. You can go camping um, on some of the islands there, um, which seems a lot more feasible for me, except for the money part, because it's really expensive because it's, it's a cruise. But someday I will probably do it. Don't know when. No, you will. You will, you won't. <laughs> there is no try. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I would love to do it someday once I, uh, you know, get Please established. Yeah, I was actually planning on doing it like two years ago, um, but that's just too much money. I wasn't able to swing it. I mean, I, I'm sure I could have, 
like you know it's not that much it, i think there was really cheap cruises for like three thousand dollars or something like that so i could have saved up the money it's just when you're a college student like me three thousand dollars is a lot of money but true, true. that's my name oops <laughs> yeah um there was a few other things i wanted to ask you about Mm, oh, so how, how do we make money when we're traveling, or how to travel for free, or travel for less? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you just talk about that for a little bit? So, um, a great way to, like a lot of people are actually writing a book about it, um, on the different ways of traveling, and if you have a lot of money, or you have less, or you want to travel for free, um, there is ways to travel for, let's say you want to go live in Europe, or you know some other country for free, for let's just say a summer so you're a college student and you can afford the ticket you, know, you get it a few weeks in advance you get it or a month or a few months in advance you get a 600 or a thousand dollar ticket round trip ticket from europe there and back and you want to go hang out in spain because you're learning spanish for the summer um you can easily get a job at a hostel and you're not getting paid but they give you food and they give you housing and you're gonna work 20 hours a week but you're hanging out at a hostel working for the summer you can teach English on the side and still make some money, mm-hmm. and then maybe do that for a month or two, and then you know you hitchhike or backpack around Europe, and um, you can play music on the streets, make money doing that, and yeah. Yeah. I think feasible to do, um, you know, travel for ex- ex- uh, long periods of time. Sure. I, you know, live. I've uh, oops. I've done that before. Uh, a lot of times when I'll be backpacking through Europe or something, I'll take with a little ukulele in my backpack. Um, I've found that ukuleles and guitars and stuff don't make me as much money. Maybe they would if you're really good. Um, but uh, I, last time I went to Montreal, I brought a flute with instead of, uh, instead of the ukulele. And I just had a Bluetooth speaker that I hooked up to my... Um, iPad, and then I would play backtracks, and then play the flute along with the backtracks, and I made like five times more money per hour than I did when I would bring the ukulele. That's a really good idea. I'll have to do that. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna do harmonica, but it sounds like maybe I can do a, a wind instrument. Yeah, harmonica is not terribly difficult to learn. Um, I've played it before. It's just like I want to do whatever is the most. I don't really care about playing instruments. Like I'm just trying to make some extra cash. Yeah. Um, I think if you're playing on the streets while traveling, well, first of all, if you're going to be traveling, if you're backpacking around, you, you, you want to travel light. So a harmonica or a tin whistle is going to be your best bet. You know, even something small like this is going to be bulky to lug around with you everywhere. Um, if you're not that good at playing, you'll still make a little bit of money for people that just have pity on you, right? If you're really good, you're going to make a lot more. Um... You know, because there are people that will actually stop and listen. And staying at hostels and stuff too, or, or couch surfing. A lot of the time, you can borrow like a guitar or something from the hostel. True. Yeah. Hey, leave, I'm gonna leave my passport here, or you know, something really valuable at the front desk. I'm like, hey, can I borrow this for the next couple hours? Sure. I'm gonna go play some music on the street to go to a park or something. And... Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, there. I've had, I have a good deal of experience playing on the streets, and um, I've found... I mean, there have been times where I've played for like two hours and made a dollar. <laughs> you know, you, you, have, you have to be at the right place at the right time. you got to know when and where to play. Two hours drinking is the best time. Friday nights, Saturday yep. nights. Yeah, Brett and I used to go out right as people were coming out of the bars, and they get real generous at that hour. <laughs> <laughs> Dollars, um, fives. Right. I think we even got a ten one time. Yeah, I mean, people have given me 20s before. Um, It's not all the time, but, you know, if you get someone, especially if you get, like, a couple on a date who you you, you sit and you play some romantic music for them. Yep, um, that's happened to me before. Uh, You got to know the right songs. You know, you want to know a good repertoire, uh, popular songs that people like, right? Because if you're playing... Uh, don't stop believing and you get a group of people walking by all singing along then they're going to be more likely to, 
to give you some money than if you're just playing some song you wrote and you're the only person that knows it. Um, and that's interesting, funny. anything that's interesting is going to make you more money. So flute, you don't see people playing the flute. I, I don't play an actual flute. I play a tin whistle, which is a type of flute. Um, and you don't see people playing that all the time. Not as much as, as the guitars. So that made me more money. If you can do some kind of percussion while doing it, if you can multitask, do something funny, to me, then uh, that's just going to increase your opportunities for making cash. But um, have you done any other ways of making cash along the way? I mean, just working? Or? Not pretty much yet. Uh, I'm doing more stuff online with like teaching and affiliate marketing. So hopefully, if that grows, I'll be able to make more of an income online as I'm going along the road. Right. But I don't know. If you, um, if you work online, if your job is, I don't know, if you do some kind of programming or some kind of consulting or search engine optimization or you have something that you can do from your laptop, then you're golden. When I was in Panama a few years ago, um, I met a lady who just has a normal job just like she worked in the United States. And then one day she realized, if I'm just working from home anyways, then home can be anywhere. So she moved to Panama and she worked down there and she volunteered at with uh, this uh, missions organization um, and that's just where she lived. But her job was exactly the same as it was in the States. So, um, do we have anything else that you want to add? I think this video is about 20 minutes long so far, so. Um. Yeah, um, we can talk about traveling in first world countries versus third world countries or um, different, you know, Staying at hotels or, or hostels. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, a lot of Americans are afraid of hostels. I've had True. so many I've talked to so many people, I'm like, yeah, just go stay at a hostel. It's like, I've stayed at hostels for as cheap as $2 a night, and you can generally get them for 30 which is still a third of the price of most hotels. Right. Right. Even at like four places, you know. Yeah. Like 20 I find that people that haven't traveled very much have a misconception about how dangerous the world is. Right. It's not that dangerous. Chicago is really dangerous in compared to Israel. People think Israel is really dangerous. Yeah. But, like, like no, nothing compared to Chicago. You have to be smart, okay? Um, don't go into areas where you're not supposed to be, you know. Um, don't be out past the hour that it's safe. Don't, you know. Do your research. Ask the people at the lobby, at the hotel or hostel. I don't know, be like, if you're in San Pedro Sula, uh, Honduras, you don't leave your, your house or hotel, especially yeah. at night. And, you know, it's like... I've, you know, I've, I spent a week in San Pedro Sula in 2015, and to tell you the truth, I never felt threatened at all. Yeah, I mean, I was there for, you know, two days, and it wasn't... It's, and this is the city, I, as, I believe, this is the city that it has the single highest murder per capita in the world. Least, like one or two in every thousand people. Well, Hon Honduras has the highest murder rate in the world, and San Pedro Sula has the highest murder rate in Honduras. Um, and I'm telling you, I spent a week there, and I did not feel like my life was in danger. You know, there was no one threatening me. The people were very nice, very kind. Um, I don't know, what was your impression of the city? Yeah, I mean, the people I met there were super nice. They wanted to hang out, you know. Um, I would, it, was, it wasn't like India. India people will try to swindle you and take your money or, you know, rip you off. But they're, like, you know, more family-oriented, not too crazy. Yeah. And if this is the most dangerous city in the world, then I think people do just have misconceptions sometimes about how dangerous the world is. And again, that's not telling people to throw caution to the wind. You want to do your research. You want to be safe. You want to use your brain. But don't let fear of, don't let the headlines stop you from, you know, potentially having these great opportunities. Yeah. If you're going to go travel to North Korea, do as much research as you can. But like, you know, most of the places, you know, better in the world, you can travel to, you know, fairly safe. Right. Right. So I think I'm going to cut it off there. The video is about 25 minutes long. Um... 
Uh, thanks for watching. And Brett, before we cut off, is there? I'm just going to give you the last word. If there's anything you want to say, if there is one message that you uh, want my subscribers to hear about, is there anything before we go? Just you know, if you if you haven't traveled to a new country or you don't you're not planning on it, I would just and you want to, I'd just give you the the idea to try make a commitment to travel to at least one new country a year. I did that, and last year I traveled to an additional like 15 places. So it's a really good, you know, once you once you plant that seed, it'll it'll grow and you'll actually do it. All right. All right. Great. Thanks so much for coming on the show, and uh, maybe we'll work together sometime in the future. Yeah, we'll do some more videos. We can do it online. I'm sure we'll do traveling again sometime. Oh, yeah. Sometime in our lives. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, we'll see you guys later.